Right, before anybody starts moaning, yes, this is a wood vice. Um, but it's the only one we've got actually in the workshop and... Oh my God. <laughs> Did you see that? Just by chance, I just happened to turn that. <laughs> it's actually started to undo. Oh, that was a shocker. Wasn't even meaning to do that. I was just laying my hand on it and just... Happened to come undone. Well, I've got movement to and fro in it already, so... Right, OK, well... Let's start washing it out, I suppose, to see what we've got. Well, off camera, I just happened to pull on the nose cone, and the nose cone just pulled apart. So it's complete bearing and a thrust bearing. But in the middle was this bit of metal. Now, to me, it looks like a roller of some description, but it's got a little indent in the end. I don't know if you can see that or not. So I wish I would have said what a bearing would have sat on there, but um, I don't see a bearing, but there's a... In the middle of the races there, there's like a little little nib. Let's, um, see that little nib? And I think that might sit on there, but I'm not quite sure what that is. But So I'm going to clean this up and um, see how far I can take it apart. Right, OK, I don't think I'm going to bother going any further with this at all because I just don't think it's worthwhile spending any money on this one but look at the seat on this one let's see if I can get you zoomed in a bit better it is rough as arseholes it really is it is absolutely cream crackered yeah so this is the other one um, and it's pretty good apart from one little spot one little spot there I don't know if you can see that or not, but either either, it's going to want a thrust, and I expect this bearing by the time I cleaned it up probably won't be much better. And then there's this, which I'm convinced is broken bit. So I think this one's um, unsalvageable. Yeah, that bearing actually feels quite rough. I might just try and quickly clean it up, it's not going to be taking anything, I'll just wash it out and see what happens. I'll just blow that out with an airline. Yeah, that's um, cream crackered. Got a right old notch going onto it there. Right, so I think that one is um, scrap. On to the next one. So this one I've loosened off off camera because it was just easier to do that. You've just seen that. You don't need to just put a pair of grips on it and undid it so and I'm assuming this one's going to be the same as the little one inside but just a larger version but um, I want to see All right, well, it doesn't come apart like that so See if I can find a long punch to go down in there. Well, I found a punch. It's not super long, but it might just be long enough just to drift the end out. So, so I'll try and keep that in the center as best I can. It feels like 
just like something's going. Right, okay. So this one is a slightly different setup. But I can't see through that, so I wonder whether. And I might need this longer punch, I think, but um, come back to that in a second. So we've got the bearings and a bearing track, which seems to be fixed there. This is almost like the first one inside. <laughs> So let's give this a basic clean up and see what um, see what it comes out like. Yes, okay, so <clears throat> this bearing I think is okay. Thrust bearing, if I was going to replace the thrust bearing I might replace that roller bearing as well running free enough and it's not graunchy but it is I know that's effectively dry as it were there's no oil or lubricant but it's whether these would come off easy enough M A N Y oh Germany oh yeah it's German bearing GMN and it's a 6202, right. So that should be easily replaceable. So I think this one's rebeatable, subject to the cost of the, um, the bearings, and whether it's worthwhile. Right, get these um, just rinsed off with a bit of white spirit, and um, I'll bring you back in a minute. Just a note, I've seen people blow bearings out on their finger, stick it on their finger, blow the bearing out. Now, I've seen the results of that. One of these bearings seized up on an old mate's um, finger while he was blowing it up. The bearing was knackered, but as he blew it out, the bearings got out of line, cocked, and literally it took the skin off his finger. You can imagine the force, the inertia of that. Just suddenly coming to a standing sill, just like that. Uh, they managed to repair his finger, but he lost a lot of um, sensation in the end of his finger afterwards because literally it just tore the end of his finger to bits. And um, if you ever do drop one of these things when they're spinning like that, they can disappear. They do bloody go. Anyway, just a word of note. Don't go spinning them up um, when you're holding them. Just make sure you've got it on something. Even if you're putting a piece of wood or something through it, or a screwdriver handle and you're just, you know, you've got... Slip it on the end there and blow it out. It's fine. Uh, wear eye protection as well. Anyway, back to cleaning this up. So, I've got it all cleaned up nicely. So this is basically how it goes in the assembly. The bearing has a frost shim, which basically separates the two bearings from one another, like so. Uh, the thrust washer itself, the thrust bearing itself. Tail bearing, which is a very small needle roller bearing. And it feels alright. And then just 
a thrust end cap. Now I'm presuming there would have been a screw going against that, but I don't know. There's no thread in the end of here, that's for sure. So maybe it's just assembled and that is it. Um, what's odd, as far as I'm concerned, is there's no adjustment on the cap. Cap just up tight and that's it. So the thrust bearing has got to be shimmed. <clears throat> so we'll, um, we'll see when it comes to it about assembling that. Now this has got a proper seal in this one. Um, part number is G2228 four um now what's interesting look how black and gritty and pitted it is this side nice and clean so it's almost like if you look at the casing the casing's got like a tide mark in it so it's almost like this thing's been left in maybe um a coolant tray or the swarf tray or something for ages Um, and I say this is this side of the bearing is actually horrendous. You can see it's all pitted and it's terrible. Made in Germany, GMN. I've not actually heard of them myself. And the number is uh, six two o two. But now it's all clean. It's quite rough. So and. Um, when I was cleaning this, it did actually seize up. So remember what I was saying about don't put that in your finger and blow it out of an airline? Don't do it. You know, if you're going to hold it, hold it still and blow it out. Or just pop it on the shaft or screwdriver or something and blow it out. Don't hold the sodding thing itself because you can just imagine that just suddenly coming to a grinding stop. It's going to want to take your finger with it. And having seen the results of it, it's nasty. And here we come to the thrust itself. And this has got some numbers on it. It's um, an FAG bearing. And it is 51102. So with those numbers I should be able to get to replacement of those two bearings. Um, the seal is in quite good shape. I'll, um, I'll see. I'll... Um, I'll see what the price is. It felt nice and tight on the cone anyway, so but obviously it's not stopped water getting in there, so we'll see. So definitely gonna replace that one. Definitely gonna replace that one. Uh the seal, I'll see what that's I can get hold of it. See what the price is. Uh tail one I think is nice. There was definitely no signs of dirt and crap down here anyway. Um so I'm going to price them up, uh, they might be just ridiculous money and therefore this is another scrap one, but um, I think they shouldn't be too dear, personally. Right, okay, let's just give this a tap with a chisel. There we are, out. Okie doke, right, there's a little bit of crap in there, so that needs um, wiping out. Right, next, put this washer in now.